lenses, examples two and three, how lenses work, how they form images by ray tracing and mathematical calculation. In the first case here, once again, problem number two, uh, we have a plano convex, actually it's not a plano convex lens, it's a converging lens, so it's not this, this is mislabel, and it's not even this, not plano, it doesn't really matter, it's a converging lens, converging, that's the only thing that's important here. It doesn't really matter how you draw it, it's just we know it's going to converge light. Anyway, the object is at 10 centimeters. I will use a candle once again as my object. It's real close in this case. And the candle has a little flame. I'm actually going to make it red this time. Let's try to. All right. And it's at about the 10 centimeter mark. The focal length is 20 centimeters in this case. So our technique once again is to draw two or three rays to locate the image. And the one that's almost always a slam dunk is to draw uh, the, w the ray of light given off by the, or reflected by the object, or given off by the object that is parallel to the principal axis. Goes in, it bends. Once again, I'll show one bend in the middle of the lens. It bends through the focal point. You initially start off parallel to the principal axis, bends through the focal point. And the other one that's kind of a slam dunk is rule number three. Number two is kind of hard to draw here. We have a ray of light that's lined up with a focal point. Doesn't work too well here. But the third one, the, the, the ray of light coming from the object that goes through the center of the lens, something like this. I suggest you use a straight edge once again. But on the right-hand side here, you can kind of see, well, they almost look parallel, but they're not. They are diverging. They do not intersect on the right side. But if you project them backwards, once again, using our dash lines without a ruler, it's a little bit tricky. But somehow, or some, approximately, they're going to intersect about where this black dot is right here. Your diagram will be a little bit better since you're using a ruler. You have to project those two red rays, the refracted rays, backwards to see where they intersect. And that will determine the flame part of the image. So the flame part of the image is going to be right there. Um, you use red. And then the actual candle part of the image is going to be large like this, always stationed with the bottom part on the principal axis. So this is going to be a large, very large, in, in, uh, enlarged image. Essentially, this is how magnifying glasses are worked. This is the structure, uh, the, the scenario in which you would use this kind of lens as a magnifying glass. Your eyeball, this is supposed to be your eyeball over here, all right, will be looking for light coming through the lens into your eyeball, and your eye sends a message to your brain saying you see something really big, even though it's really small, uh, based on the ray diagram we see here. But your lens has to be close to our tiny object. All right, so there's the ray diagram. But by calculation now, where is the image located? We start with the basic lens equation once again, 1 over f equals 1 over p plus 1 over small q. So we have 1 over 20 equals 1 over 10 plus 1 over q. Punching into our calculator, q equals negative 20 centimeters. So that really tells us enough to get all our uh, attributes of the image. Is it real or virtual? Based on a negative 20, it's virtual. You can also see that in the diagram. It's upright. Part B, then, is the location. Q equals negative 20 centimeters. It's to the left of the lens. So that's, that's a virtual territory for a lens. That's what's different between a lens and a mirror. For a mirror, virtual territory is to the right or behind the mirror, so to speak. And part C, what's the magnification? Well, it's going to be the opposite of negative 20 divided by the object distance, which was 10, so the magnification here is positive 2. It's twice the size, or it's magnified by a factor of 2 from the object. All right, di uh, diverging lens here, example number 3. This is what I normally do when I sketch these diagrams. I use an arrow as my object. It's even simpler than drawing a candle. That arrow that you see here as my object is not a ray of light. It's a can. It's a. It's a. It could be the candle. It could be a 
T-Rex or whatever that has light reflecting off of it in all different directions and it just so happens that one ray of light would come parallel to the principal axis, go through the lens, but it refracts, bends, such that it lines up with F. That's the refracted ray number one. It lines up with the F on the left-hand side. And then once again, the almost the fail-safe second ray to draw is step number three, the one that goes through the center of the lens. If I draw the ray through the center of a lens, which does not bend, it's just a straight ray. And that's enough to solve the problem. If you wanted to draw the second ray, which is the opposite of the first one I drew, so number one is this one, number three in my outline from yesterday is that one. If you want, like I say, to draw number two, it's optional. It would look something like this. It goes towards the F on the right-hand side, so I'm aiming towards F on the right-hand side. So if I continued, which I'm not going to do, well, I will continue, but not like that. It's going to bend. It bends through parallel to the principal axis. That's number two, optional. Well, you have to draw one, uh, two of those three. Anyway, on the right-hand side here, one, two, and three, those are diverging. Diverging lens causes light to diverge. But if you follow those backwards, and I will use, let's say, I'm going to use black in this case. Well, this one's already set. This is the backwards projection of number one. Uh, number three, it's, uh, it's just a straight ray anyways. I don't need to project it backwards. But ray number two, if I go backwards with that one, all three of those rays, one, two, and three, should intersect in one spot. And that single spot defines the image location, the top of my image, the arrow part of the image. And if I draw the image, it will be very small in this case, a little arrow. Basically, these types of lenses act as demagnifiers. They make things look small, always. So that's locating the image using a ray diagram. Now it's like, let's calculate the location of the image using the lens equation, 1 over f equals 1 over p plus 1 over q, plugging in the numbers, 1 over negative 20. Make sure it's a negative 20 for a diverging lens. Even if they don't tell you it's a negative, for a diverging lens it has to be negative. 1 over 40 for the object location plus 1 over q. Going to your calculator, q comes out to be negative 13 centimeters. Once again, that pretty much tells you all three parts uh, aspects, three aspects of the image that you really need to know. The, the negative there tells you part A, it's virtual. You can see that in the diagram as well, it's upright. Part B then is, is that very answer, Q is negative 13. And part C, what's the magnification? The magnification will be negative, negative 13 divided by the object uh, distance, which is 40, so M turns out to be 0.33. So the image is one-third the size of the object.